Hello everyone, thanks for joining me and in this video we will have a look at the Cisco umbrella service and what it has to offer, the different ways it can be deployed and the different packages you can purchase it in. First though, very quickly, we will have a look at the issue with the current landscape and why these cloud-based security services such as Cisco Umbrella have been introduced into the market. In a traditional world, all traffic has gone through the data center and this includes internet traffic and traffic to the cloud as well and all security and monitoring controls have been within the data center. So all users at the bottom here, whether in a head office, branch office, co-location, have been traversing the data center to get to data center services or even to the internet or even to the cloud and this is where security policies have been defined for user activity and everything has been logged. So everything in terms of security policies and logging has all been done within the data center so the data center has been the single point of location for everything so everything has to hit the data center before the data center enforces all its uh, security controls but this has had a massive impact on the data center bandwidth especially with cloud services growing in demand every day there needs to be a better way of bringing users closer to the cloud applications without traversing the data center for everything and this is where cloud security services were introduced such as Cisco Umbrella with the new architecture, users traverse to the DC only if they need to access data center specific applications. Otherwise, users reach out directly to the internet and cloud services for accessing anything else not in the DC. And this can now be done because user traffic passes through the Cisco umbrella for security enforcement and monitoring before being able to get to internet or cloud services, bringing users closer to the applications. I've done a much better video about this and explaining the issue and how to get to different services more effectively in my SD1 video so you may want to have a look at that if it interests you and this could be absolutely any user with the new architecture it really doesn't matter where they connect from so at the bottom you can see co-location branch office head office or even a mobile user on a company device sitting on his boat Cisco umbrella is a set of security tools in the cloud and these tools or services can be purchased in packages depending on what security controls you need. Umbrella comes under a widely known term referred to as security as a service or more official term is secure access services edge but that also includes SD1 and other services as well. And the umbrella service protects users from malicious threats and again it doesn't really matter where the user is located and this is due to the security cloud based architecture so we can see some of the umbrella features but to go through these the first one is DNS layer security which is blocking of domains linked to malicious threats the next one is secure web gateway which is a web proxy in the cloud the third one is cloud delivered firewall which is a firewall in the cloud and the last one is cloud access security broker which protects users connected to cloud based applications and actually we have one more which is the interactive threat intel which is their threat research team so Cisco umbrella originally started as a pure play DNS security service in the cloud but has now built on that to include further security tools like the ones here and next we will have a look at each of these security features to see what they provide let's have a look at DNS layer security first if the domain is linked to anything malicious it will be blocked by DNS layer security so that's the prime feature DNS security provide it blocks malicious domains with most attacks approximately 90% of attacks are DNS based attacks and the fact that DNS is the first form of traffic initiated by a user Cisco has positioned their DNS security as the first line of defense it's basically the first layer that will prevent internet based threats and stop malicious activity at an early stage which is at the DNS and IP layer before a connection has even been established and it stops threats over any port or protocol and any device can use DNS security including IoT devices which stands for Internet of Things that's your mobile devices mobile phones and tablets etc so any compromised IoT device can be protected from a DNS based attack and a lightweight proxy can also be utilized with the DNS security package where if umbrella classifies a domain that does not look safe in other words it looks like a risky domain the proxy is automatically utilized and when the proxy is automatically utilized the user requests a DNS query for a domain and if the domain looks dodgy 
Cisco DNS will respond with its own address to proxy the connection and from there on using the proxy it will be able to fully scan the traffic for anything malicious and an example of this would be a malicious file that the user has attempted to download. Secure Web Gateway is effectively a web proxy in the cloud and this provides granular security and visibility of the web traffic which provides antivirus and AMP malware scanning, it provides URL protection, it provides file inspection, it provides sandboxing and blocking, also content and application control and finally it also provides SSL decryption and inspection. Moving on to Cloud Delivered Firewall and the Cloud Delivered Firewall is a firewall which you can use like a traditional firewall with the use of customizable policy enforcement and the blocking of protocols, ports and IP addresses. It provides logs and reports as well and third it also is a layer 7 firewall that provides layer 7 application visibility and control using signature detection to recognize thousands of applications. Next, having a look at Cloud Access Security Broker or CASP, and CASP basically provides security for cloud based applications. It provides application detail and risk information. It provides reports on the cloud applications that are used within the organization and policy enforcement of cloud apps. So it has the ability to block and allow specific cloud apps. So, in a nutshell, it provides application security controlling cloud apps connected to the organization. And next is the interactive threat intel feature. So all of these uh, should have come one by one like the previous slides but obviously I haven't set this one up correctly so uh, you can see them all there. And the first one there is interactive threat intel is Cisco's Talos threat intelligence research team that provides threat intelligence feeds. Second it scans over 200 billion requests daily and detects malicious domains, IP addresses and URLs before they are even used in malicious activity. And the last one, it has the ability to integrate with other security orchestration tools such as their own SecureX security platform which is included as part of the umbrella subscription. SecureX is a unified console to view data across all Cisco security solutions. It's basically a threat detection and incidence response tool. And like with any security, this is a layered security approach with first DNS layer is checked for domains associated with malware. Then the cloud delivered firewall comes next, which checks for IP port protocol and application based security rules. And if the packet is 80 or 443, when the firewall inspects it, the connection will be passed on to secure web gateway which will check the web traffic for malicious threats and undertake any policy enforcement that has been configured. Next we will have a look at SD1 integration and deployment options. So the first is the umbrella solution also integrates with their Cisco SD1 platform by utilizing direct internet access breaking out of the local branch offices. You would integrate vManage which is Cisco's SD1 management platform within the umbrella dashboard in which this allows you to configure policies for all your SD1 devices which will forward all traffic to Umbrella for visibility and enforcement. For that matter, the Cisco Meraki wireless solution also integrates with Umbrella for wireless clients and you can set up the use of Umbrella from the Meraki dashboard and set up policies from there and the same is also available on the Meraki MX solution. So we will have a look at some deployment options, they're not really options, they are more deployment methods depending on which features you are using. So deployment option one would be to set up Umbrella DNS using the most basic setup which is to change your forwarders to Cisco Umbrella DNS public IP address and from here on all DNS requests will be managed by Umbrella and the organization public source address will be registered within the DNS dashboard so Umbrella allows the connection through. Second, for the cloud based firewall or cloud delivered firewall, you would configure an IPsec tunnel from any device within the organization to Umbrella for the firewall to process traffic. And if you are utilizing the secure web gateway, there are four methods 
and this can be done with either the Cisco AnyConnect client software which is their commonly used client software for their mobile user VPN connectivity but does other things too or you can connect via a pack file or you can use proxy chaining or finally you can configure an IPsec tunnel just like the cloud delivered firewall however any connect or pack files is the most simplest and quickest method and if you want umbrella to see the end users device IP address you would use an umbrella VA which is the umbrella virtual appliance within the environment which encrypts the connection so this way umbrella can see which device are making which DNS requests for more granular control and visibility you can set policies based on usernames as well and user groups by installing an AD connector which is an active directory connector within the environment which forwards the user information to umbrella so to be able to see the AD user info and IP mappings you will need both the AD connector and umbrella virtual appliance to encrypt the packets and send the information onto umbrella and for completely mobile roaming users there are two options with option one there's a roaming client downloadable from the umbrella dashboard and can be pushed by using any of the common methods such as AD group policies SCCM etc the client is supported on any device such as Windows Apple Mac Chromebook etc and once this is done the client will automatically redirect traffic to Cisco umbrella cloud platform for DNS layer filtering and the second option is the use of Cisco AnyConnect roaming security module. AnyConnect is commonly used for their Cisco's remote access VPN connection again, but can also be used for Umbrella as well amongst other services. So for mobile users, if you already use the VPN client, then it makes sense you would just bolt it onto the AnyConnect client. Otherwise, you would use the roaming client. And finally, the last slide is packages. With packages, there are different packages that can be purchased and you can see which features come with each package on the right hand side. You don't see the layer 7 firewall in any of these three packages on the right here, but there is a fourth package coming soon offering the layer 7 firewall and new DLP capabilities as well. And that's it guys, as a brief summary of Cisco Umbrella. Thanks for watching.